Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I was late uh, because we had an Appropriations Committee hearing, but um, I wanted to just say a couple of things. In the past few weeks, Texas has had two major pipeline uh, fatal accidents, both of which were uh, excavation accidents, and any excavation accident is a preventable one. Um, and so I wanted to ask you basically two questions. One is, do you think that we can improve on the one call system? Are what states or are there a number of states that don't participate in the one call system? And should we be uh, doing something about that to stop having exemptions from the one call system? That would be number one. And number two, um, I'll submit my opening statement for the record. But the other thing, of course, being a coastal state that I worry about is that the Pipeline Hazardous Materials Safety Administration um, regulates offshore transmission lines in state waters, but the Mineral Management Service has jurisdiction for offshore pipelines in the Outer Continental Shelf. Uh, so I'm concerned that regulations might not be uniform, that there might be uh, a confusion when there is an accident about who does what. And is that a concern in your opinion, uh, Ms. Quarterman or Ms. Herzman? Um, and should we be dealing with that in this uh, authorization? Well, first let me speak to the excavation damage issue. I, I fully agree with you that those two incidents were absolutely preventable and had um, all the correct sticks, steps been taken both by the people excavating to call and the people owning the pipeline to mark the line and mark it correctly that those incidents would not have occurred. Since the Pipes Act of 2006 and about 2007, uh, PHMSA worked to create the National 811 number and has been providing funding to the Common Ground Alliance, which deals not only with pipelines but with other underground utilities to support uh, publishing information and... Well, what is the participation level of states? Is it high or is it low? Or the states are actually very, very much participate participating in a high level. Uh, unfortunately, there are some states that have the exemptions that you refer to, and I have to say, um, during my speeches to all the organizations that might be affected by this, I repeatedly tell them the exemptions are not something that we believe are appropriate. Um, and for example, with this respect to the state of Maryland, they were very recently uh, creating a one-call law and they were going to exempt the Department of Transportation and we called and talked to them and were able to uh, help them come to the conclusion that wasn't the right decision. Uh, we have a lot of work to do on some states. Some states are doing a fantastic job. Um, but it is uh, a gradual uh, process. I think we could be doing a lot more if we had more funding on this. We are providing state damage prevention grants of about $2 million a year to state, all the states who come and request money to work on damage prevention. We also have $1 million in one call grants that go to the states as well. So there's a lot being done, but obviously uh, until 811 becomes recognized the same as 911, uh, we would not have done our job completely. What, go ahead. Okay. Uh, coastal, the... Yes, on the coastal issue. Um, the jurisdiction is uh, somewhat confusing. Uh, PHMSA has two memoranda of, of understanding with the Department of Interior and with the Coast Guard and also with EPA with respect to, for example, oil spill response. One memorandum of understanding divides the, uh, the authority on who should get oil spill response plans between those different agencies. And PHMSA gets the plans for onshore pipelines and MMS gets it for offshore pipelines and off other offshore facilities. I think that may be, uh, uh, there's a piece of legislation under consideration to change that. With respect to the jurisdiction over pipelines on the outer continental shelf, um, MMS has jurisdiction over 
those that are production pipelines, production related facilities. Uh, FEMSA has those that are in the Outer Carmel's shelf that are transportation related, and the states have those that are in state waters. Yes, I know. Uh I, my time is up, so I won't pursue it uh, further. But uh, any input you can have on the, this reauthorization that would help uh, in the uh, conflicts, I would appreciate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me, uh, until the chairman gets back to the vote, hopefully uh, in the next few minutes, uh, ask a couple of questions, and I'm going to have to run and vote too. But I do want to thank you for uh, appearing here today and, and um,